So welcome to Two Dads and Six Daughters, our weekly show with me, Tony Scott, and my, my best friend, Mark Clark, who's the uh, godfather of my second daughter, Olivia. Man. And man, she's a... Uh, you know, man, I never thought, I, I, I really, I never thought this would be, it never crossed my mind how difficult it would be. I mean, and I feel like such a, like a weasel because she's only 14 miles away. Yeah. But man, but man, just the pain, her not here, man, just breaks my heart. And I, but it's all for a good thing, right? But for some reason, I, I miss her. And well, it, you, it's, it's hard, man. Well, you know, Tony, you you like to have your family close. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, we all do. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you are, that, you know, that's, that's what you do. You don't do much. Yeah. You do family. That's yeah, what you I do. do family. You that's family. That's what I do. <laughs> hey, you family. You family. family. <laughs> that's what, they, that's what <laughs> I do. I never thought it would be this difficult, though, man. Yeah. But it's it's pretty. It's been pretty tough, and it's it's gotten no better. Uh, I got. I thought it was getting better, but nah. She spent the weekend here this past weekend, and then like, uh, normally my wife takes her back, uh, but I took her back, you know, because I wanted to spend a little bit more time with her. And then, uh, I mean, it was so bad, man. I couldn't even work Monday. You got see, so you, you almost got in a wreck coming back, tearing up, man. You, you know. <laughs> well, it wasn't that bad, but I mean, you know, but it was. I couldn't work Monday. I couldn't function. So, uh, so see all those people that say you're a hard ass. Look at you. Taking well, off you know, work. I've, I've, ch I've changed, you know, but it's just one of those things that you know. I, I'm just, it's just. I guess it's a process. I guess I don't know, but uh, it's one of those things. So. Um, no, no, Tony, you can't move in with her. Okay. <laughs> no, she's I got know. a beautiful young lady who's her roommate. So no. There's, and it's already crowded in there anyway, so <laughs> you know there's no there's no room for anything in there. So it's it's pretty crowded. So you don't have a problem with you uh, crying in front of your girls, do you? Oh no, they see, they see me cry so many times it's almost embarrassing. It's like okay. <laughs> there he there he goes. Here, he go, here comes the waterworks. <laughs> they were they like you the dick for meal of dads or something, yeah, man. You know you get emotional. You know we had. So uh, do they cry when you cry? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, but I had uh, yeah. You know it's it's. It, it, yeah, it's, it's a very Allison having having a family makes me, you know, I was emotional anyway. Yeah. You knew me as a single man. Yeah. But now add add the girls to it and the wife, man. It's like something that I probably wouldn't cry uh, by myself with Allison around or the kids. I get I find myself being very hyper emotional. Mm. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I guess it's, uh, you know, I guess it's that, that responsibility or that connection or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, man, get add add uh, add them to the mix. Yeah, and I'm done. See you now, know? back in the day when we worked together, if, if you'd have been the married one and I'd have been the single one, I'd have called you a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, what do you mean back then? You still do? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that now. I wouldn't do that now. Keep it no. all inside, man. No, well, see, my father taught ta taught me not to cry. Yeah. So I don't cry, and so like when he died, I didn't cry. Yeah. You know, not one. I have never cried over him passing away. And I think about him a lot of times every day. What do you? What he? What he taught me? Things like that. So what happens when you probably, when when I would cry if if it were, if if I were in your situation, what happens? Do you feel a certain pressure inside your head? Where does that? Where does that emotion go? Or is it just you're not attached? It, it, I'm I'm just not attached to that emotion. Mm -hmm. But you like know. with with Olivia being that after. Uh, taking her to school, you felt a little bit overwhelmed, though. So you don't have like you know a what I'll tell you when I felt overwhelmed. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we were texting each other back and forth, and you know we were through for the night. I said good night, baby girl. I love you. She texted me back. I love you too. I miss you. And when she did that, I teared up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she know? broke through. She, okay, so and but so. but but other than that, I don't I don't feel like I'm not necessarily like crying like when I took her back to school Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um. But I just felt like empty. Mm. You know, well, a connects. Well, you know, I've been watching. Uh, I was trying to think. Uh, we interviewed years ago Ayanna Van Zandt, correct? Mm. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't. A, it wasn't <laughs> the best. It wasn't the best experience. We had a kind of rough time with her, right? Yeah. And then when when she when when I got to Baltimore, we became closer. Actually, you and her. Yeah. Yeah. We, she she was a regular on the show, and we became closer. And so watching her show. I just told Allison this today. You, you see a pattern, or as some of us say, a pattern, a pattern. Of, of older people. You know, they grew up in an era like your dad mm -hmm. and probably culturally black Hispanics where, you know, crying was weak or you just didn't cry. The guys didn't cry. 
Right. But it's interesting when you see the show and a father, Ayanla kind of hits him with the, everything and paints the picture. And you see this guy who in his 70s or even 80s who never really cried. They almost it's, it's, it's very uncomfortable to see because they almost like ex- implode, mm-hmm. you know, because they've never done it before. And it finally hits them. It's like coming face to face with what you've done to your kids. Um, and so it's interesting you say that because I, I think that's a that's a dynamic that's very real as far as an age gap where there was a generation that basically said, look, especially with men, look, I provide for the family. Mm-hmm. That's how I show you I love you. You know, that's, mm-hmm. in fact, that's, that's a famous line in the in the in the in the play Fences, James Earl Jones. Basically, you know, I, I say I love you because because I'm. I'm supporting the family. I'm still here, ain't I? You know, mm-hmm. that's kind of like my verses now. And now, and you know, everybody says I love you, and people don't yeah. say they love you. And so it, it's um, it is interesting that, that that I think more and more men are able to say it, but I think uh, it still is a big factor where a lot of guys aren't because they don't either have a man around right. at all, or they have figuring out themselves. You know? Yeah, I got you. So for me, so for me, it was never. It's never been a issue of manlyhood or crying and i think the fact that i was a big guy helped because a lot of those men rules that mm-hmm. guys live by even i don't think i ever lived by them because uh you know i was always but, emotional but you didn't grow up with a man constantly telling you don't cry no 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 and i didn't have and i didn't and i didn't feel the i think sometimes boys feel a certain thing you know around other boys you have to act manly or have to act. I never had that. I didn't feel that way. But again, I think a part of it, I always contribute. I always say, I think as I was a big guy, you know, I got away with it. People still punk, they still cracked on you. Yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. didn't, it, it's different. You know what I mean? I think little guys yeah. are always fighting for something. Yeah. Big guys, I think people almost, there's a certain thing. They don't, they don't test you as much. You know? Well, I know like if I, if for whatever reason I had to raise my grandsons, I, I, I don't think I would like, be that don't cry i don't think i would be that but i will say this that at my age now i don't see anything wrong with it but when i see a man cry it bothers me <laughs> makes you a little uncomfortable it, it makes me uncomfortable mm-hmm. not enough not enough to criticize them but it right. makes me uncomfortable because i well, i grew up being programmed you men don't do that yeah yeah. Right. So, you know, but I don't see anything wrong with it. But it's just that when I see it for that split second, I'm like, what's wrong with him? You know, it's like one of those things. But then it goes away because yeah. now I understand now that that's normal. Well, because I think people, the, the old line would be, you need look, you need to be strong for your family. Yeah. I think that was how it was, you know, because if you, cause if you and, and there is a there is I think that's always at play with men. Like, you know, a certain degree of, you know, you know, there's a rat in the there's a rat in the garage. Mm-hmm. You got to go get the rat. Mm-hmm. You got mm-hmm. who's gonna get the rat? You gotta get the rat. You gotta get the rat. Yeah. Inside, do you want to go with the rat? No. No. Are you terrified? <laughs> yes. <laughs> are you, you know, are you gonna act like you're tough? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, are you gonna go yeah. in and like? Ah! No, you can't. <laughs> you get the rat. You know, and I think this kind of happens. So, so I think I, I, my crying most of the time is emotional, like you know something touching or something emotional, not a crying like oh I'm so unhappy. I, I've never cried based on something going on with me, like, like unsadness or unhappy or whatever. You ever cried over a movie? Oh yeah. Uh, that's all the time. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I cry over, I cry over like anything emotional mm-hmm. I will cry about, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to cry about probably again. I probably play into the same thing. The manly stuff. I'm probably not going to cry. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and again, we probably in the back of our mind always had that going on. Especially I got a house full of girls too. So I got to rep, I got to represent, you know, okay, right. you I know. got you. I got you. So do you teach your girls grace and how to take the high road or do you lead by example or do you do you talk to them about that, about, you know, always taking the high road, stuff like that? Well, I think it's, it's interesting. I, I, I think um, the high road, if somebody puts their hands on you, probably not, but they probably you but do. You, do you tell them that, though? Yeah, because yeah, we, we had an incident and we basically I was so angry. You know, the new rule is break their freaking neck. <laughs> That's the new rule. <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> if somebody puts their hand on you, all they need to pull off. back enough. You know, because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think you know, in this day, sadly, you know. Now, granted, it's, a, it's the wild, wild west out there in a lot of ways, 
but uh, but also there's no honor. In our day, there was honor. You would it fight. Was. You'd fight somebody. Now you fight somebody, they go get a gun and kill you. So right, right. You know, you you might as well not go out like no punk. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I well, the other thing is they got to get you know my girls. I got you know they got to recognize also the odds now. You're you're suburban chicks. Mm-hmm. You going up, you going up against the hood. You you got to check and make sure. Yeah. Because you don't want to get waxed. Right. Right. I just need to tell somebody what's going. On. You know. Well, oh, we always no. We always, we actually always say you know there's always someone there, an authority person. You should you should you know. Yeah. You speak. You know. But yeah, don't. You something. can't. The people just have their way with you. That's true. What about you? What about you? Uh, I've always preached take the high road. But I've always told them also that if uh, if uh, somebody puts their hands on you, you do what you got to do. <laughs> yes, you know you've said that on the radio many times before. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I mean, but I, I, I always believe that. So, so someone put their hands on you, that's a whole different dynamic for for a girl. Yep. Now a boy, I would tell them that if a girl puts her hands on you, walk away, un- unless she's got like a weapon. Yeah, you know. But if she puts her hands on you, walk away because you will never win that battle. Yeah. You will never ever win that battle. So I would say to uh, walk away if you're a boy. If you're a girl, do what you got to do, you know. So, uh, but, I I mean, I know Maria one time said, because she had taken karate for about a month. She was like, I'll just go into my stance. I'm like, that's not going to work. So in the real world, that's not going to work. So, you know, can't have that. So, man. So the government got shut down, man. Man, furloughs like a mug. You know, and in uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, they had to cancel the Klan rally because they were going to have a rally in a national park. But once the, the government closed, they, they rescinded all the permits to have your rallies or whatever you were going to have. So they had to, they had to stop their uh, they couldn't have their Klan rally this weekend. So it's a wrap. So they couldn't do that. So they didn't have it at Bojangles <laughs> no, parking lot. No, no, they couldn't do that, man. So I think they were planning something on a bigger on a bigger scale. But uh it's interesting, though, because I was talking to somebody about this today, uh, and I've talked to Olivia about this today, and this is why I always tell her, put yourself in a position where you don't have to rely on one paycheck. Yeah. You know? Amen. Uh, that's what you got to do. That's what that's the important thing to do. But I was telling someone today that, you know, because Obamacare started today, and we're recording this on a, on a Wednesday. Today's Wednesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. On a Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And... uh you know, a lot of people. So I, somebody sent me a tweet that says, where someone from Fox TV said, "Why is Obamacare available in 150 languages? If you can't speak English, you know, why should you be covered?" And I was like, "Wow, really? That's how you feel for real? You know, how about the fact that they do speak English, but they're better at reading in their language than they are reading English? How about that? Yeah. You know, ever think about that? See, that's the thing is that you know, when, when it comes to like." Politics, the left and the right, the, they, they, the, the, I'll just say this, Republicans just don't, they just don't get it. Nope. And they don't, they, they don't know what it's like to struggle. They, they've never had to struggle. And don't you know? want to know. That's the part I think, like say, the empathy level is just, and, and a part, a, a, right, a party just it almost f- finds it unbelievable. Like they yeah. would just be playing this game, you know, yeah. I'm just like, wow, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to think, what are they, what's the end game for this? Like, yeah. The inroads into people, you know, rallying on that. I, I don't understand the end game. Are they, or had they just given up? Just said, "Hey, man, this is it." You know, I, just. I heard somebody today on TV say that the Republicans hate the president more than the devil hates holy water. Man, I was like, damn. <laughs> That's, I was yeah. like, wow, true, but damn. <laughs> I was like, you know, and it's like we. And I was talking to my mom about this, and I told her, I said, you know, and this is not the case, but if it were the case, I would have no problem paying a little extra in medical care out of my paycheck if it would help someone else that couldn't get covered. You know what I'm saying? Because God God has blessed me. He's blessed me beyond words. So if I I could do something to help like that, I I mean, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I think that, but I think that's the philosophical difference that you have. I think most liberals feel that way. Most liberals mm-hmm. say, okay, you know, I got I to gotta pay taxes. It's going to help somebody. Fine. I think conservatives, I think, say, you know, they want to know every, you know, and I, and I think that's the, that's the difference. I think that is the difference. I think people who have either struggled or been through it 
probably empathize, have more empathy for that. Mm-hmm. And that's why they feel that way. Mm-hmm. I think other people are like, man, you know, no. And then the, the, to me, the, the, the game is the, the 2% or whatever, the 2% of the, the wealthy, they could pay for everything anyway. So it doesn't even matter, but they have as their pawns, the tea party and those, mm-hmm. and that, that, that working class group of white folks mainly that are moved by, uh, they're concerned about racism. So it's fear. They're, they're motivated by fear. The, the right wing is, is driven by fear, just like the Klan rallies and everything. It's the fear of the black president. It's the fear of poor people getting ahead. It's the fear of others getting ahead. So that's what drives that, that whole movement. So, and, and it's much more powerful than the whole liberal speak because that's why liberal talk shows don't do that well. Right, right. Versus, right. you know, versus yeah. conservative ones do. Yeah. yeah, like Hannity and Limbaugh and yeah. folks like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just our, you know, I mean, clearly, I've heard this said many times, but clearly it, 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 it seems to be true that, you know, the right cares more about their party than they do about the country. Yeah. You know, I mean, they hate the president that much that they're willing to throw all of us under the bus. You know, and the thing is, is that, you know, Obamacare is law of the land. It went up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court says it's constitutional. It, it passes the test. Yeah. It's law of the land. So why do you have a problem? It's, 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 it's the will of the people. It's the law of the land. Let's move on to something else. They, won't, sure. let, they won't let it go, Mark. They won't let it go. No, no. Uh, sure. None of us knows what the hell's going on, but still, <laughs> it's the law of the land. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we talked about last week about Jay-Z and the Mississippi school were using him as a model to teach kids. And I had said that if that was a way to reach the kids, then they should go for that. But then comes this Vanity Fair interview where he talks about selling drugs. That's how he got his stuff. <laughs> yes, well, that's the, yeah, well, that's no secret, though. <laughs> it's not a secret, but you know what? Is, is, it, is it necessary to, to repeat that? I think it's the... Is it keeping it real? Well, I think, I think, he, I think the... Uh, it's... It's almost the uh, full disclosure slash transparency thing, you know. But, but we already knew that, though. So does it have well, to keep being repeated? Well, but see, I think what happens is it's kind of like apples and oranges. You know what I mean? Like so the, 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 the good that people, you know, the, the, the example that he made it from, you know, the bottom to the top is used to motivate kids. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then you have the Vanity Fair article, which gives you the, the whole story, which isn't as pleasant and isn't as positive. So I think that's the loop we always get caught in. And I think it's better, though, to just be honest about it versus not, because if not, you get what you have now. I think like with, I always tell my kids with history, history class, mm-hmm. teaching about uh, um, Christopher Columbus. Well, Christopher Columbus really didn't discover America. True. So, you know, and, and, and George Washington wasn't a great man. He had right. slaves. Right. He basically played his slave. So I think we're built on, we have a tendency to do that with a lot of things, kind of like take out the good and then don't talk about the bad. And so it's not really a truth. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think we have to just inform our kids and the kids have to be informed with, with the truth. And then they can kind of sum it up themselves. So maybe, like I said, maybe that's not a good idea to use Jay-Z, but at the same time, Meeting them where they are is a way to get their attention. So I think right. you kind of have to do both, you know. But I, I, I'm not mad at him for being honest in the Vanity Fair article, I got to say. Well, I'm, you know, I'm not mad at him for that. I'm not mad at him at all. But to me, it's like, do you have to keep talking about this? Okay, we're, and, and, and then here's the other thing. How do we know that's even true? You know, Vanilla Ice used to say that he did this, that, and the other, and we found out—I don't know how we found out—that he was the way he grew up in the suburbs and all that stuff. Yeah. So how do we yeah. know? I mean, we know he grew up in, Mar- in the Marcy Project and all that. Do, do we know for certain that he dealt drugs, or he's just doing that for street cred? Well, I think his 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 twist has been pretty 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 accurate. It's con- it's confirmed pretty you know how? by others. Well, like like you know, he did he did a lot of it here in the Baltimore area, in the Maryland area, in, uh, actually on the, on the, uh, out in the Eastern shore, mm-hmm. you know? So I guess Eastern shore, Baltimore, you know, he was through. And so, yes, Reggie Reg and others confirmed. <laughs> there's a, there's a Reggie 
Reggie Reg in every city, isn't there? There's <laughs> yeah. a Reggie Rev. There's a pretty Detroit, Tony. Right, right. Yeah, Reggie Reg, yeah. and yeah, and yeah. So, you know, and, and you know what though? What happens is that we always with these star celebrities, we hear the stories, but you know what? There sometimes it really isn't a in depth article. I think this Vanity Fair one was one of the few in depth ones. Like mm-hmm. Kanye West, the kind of first about his his uh, his uh, interview, his recent interview. He really hasn't given that kind of a full interview like that that mm-hmm. was on the BBC, you know, mm-hmm. really ever. And so, but then in our in our media age, they just take the snippets from it. Sure. And, and he looks crazy. But I watched the whole interview and it was pretty, it was it actually was pretty amazing. I think I wouldn't be shocked if they, down the road that'll be in a class somewhere because he talks about a whole bunch of things, especially art, you know. Um, and then with the Jay-Z case with the Vanity Fair, it's kind of the same thing, you know, high profile, in depth with uh, who's it, Lisa, I, uh, Lisa Robinson, I think, did the interview. But, uh, you know, but I think it, you know, it, it kind of gets mixed up, though, because like you say, mm-hmm. I, I understand both sides. You know, you say on one hand, I feel I feel you like, you know, the warts sometimes, you know, you know, dim- it's, like, it's like with Dr. King, you know, Dr. King with the whole infidelity thing. Some will say, OK, he was a man. Who cares? Does it take away from a high of a dream speech and what he stood for? No, not really. For for me it doesn't, but for some it does. Yeah. Some people want to be want to say no, you know. So he's a perfect person. Eh. Well, since we talk about Jay Z, uh, I know you heard about Chris Brown saying that why does Jay Z get a pass when he stabbed somebody and you know years ago and no one ever brings that up and dealt drugs. No one ever brings that up until this Vanity Fair article came out where he talked about it himself. And Chris Brown did what he did, and that's all everybody you know. Is, uh, you know, is well, let me put it like this. And I, I say this all the time. Chris Brown uh, did what he did to Rihanna. Yeah. Obviously, she forgave him. OK, he went to to our judicial system and he was sentenced and he fulfilled that obligation. He paid his debt to society. The slate is supposed to be wide clean. But you know what? He'll never get that stink off of him. Yeah, he probably. will always be known as a woman beater. Yeah. As, as great as musician as Ike Turner was. Ike Turner will always be known as a man who beat the hell out of Tina. Yep. And that's that's the first thing people think about when they think of Ike Turner, is that he beat the crap out of Tina on a regular. This yep. is the same thing that's going to be with Chris Brown forever because we don't forget that. Yeah. You're right. You know, you know, and so for Chris Brown, I can understand Chris Brown feeling that way, though. Well, why does Jay-Z get a pass? You know, he actually committed an act of violence using a weapon. He stabbed somebody. Yeah. And well, no, one ever, no one ever brings that up. You know, mm-hmm. well, say, who did he say? Lance Rivera? I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Exactly. Well, back in the day, Lance Rivera was somebody back in the day. Yeah, yeah. And, but but also Lance Rivera probably did leak the album, too. So that was why he got stabbed. <laughs> but you don't get stabbed for that. Well, you do in the street. See, I think, like you said, I think because Jay-Z never, he didn't hide any of that. Yeah. He, it always has been up front. It wasn't really a shot. It took the, it, I think it takes the power from it. Imagine if Jay-Z didn't really talk about his criminal past. And he's now Jay Z, married to Beyonce. Everything's going well. This article in Vanity Fair would have been the the dun dun dun, right? The, <laughs> You're right. Dun, dun, right. Dun. Hey, this, this guy yeah. was hanging out with Warren Buffett. He yeah. ain't nothing but a drug dealer, right? You already knew that. So it's kind of like it, it didn't. It doesn't take anything away, and that's probably part of the probably part of his strategy to uh, you know to, to kind of like you know I really you can't really get him, right? You know. I've had some very interesting dialogue, mostly on Facebook, with this one man who I, I respect a lot because <laughs> this he's one man. He, he and, but he's he does not like Jay Z. Yeah, you know he says that Jay Z is not a role model. Jay Z should not have a seat at the table when it comes to uh, trying to reach young people. He does, he doesn't he shouldn't have a seat at the table. Where well, I disagree. Yeah. Because I think Jay Z should have a seat at the table because he's he's for, like it or not he's very influential. Oh yeah, they, they, you know. it sounds like the gentleman. God love him, but he's out of touch. And I think that's the anybody who deals with young people. You know what? It's not even with young people, Tony. It's with anybody, really. You kind of have to meet people where they are. Well, see, you know? but a long time ago, see, the, the old school was like, you know, back in my day, things were like this. We need to go back to that. But you know what? We can't go back to that. Can't we'll never, back. we'll never go back to that. That 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 ship has sailed. These kids now. 
have their own way. You know, I think we talked about this before. You know, the, the old saying was learn from my mistakes. Well, kids don't want to do that. They want to make their own mistakes. Yeah. Right. They want to watch TV. Not like we watch TV. They want to watch TV when they want to watch it. And they want to be able to watch as much as they want when they want to watch it. They don't want to watch it based on the TV network schedule. They want to watch it based on my schedule. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, their whole complete way of thinking and they don't like they don't like anything that smells of fakery. No. Nope. And know? like you said, the seat at the table, the reason is he has a seat at the table is like you said, is because he's wealthy. I can tell you something. I don't care about Mark Clark. The kids will say Jay-Z says something that was interesting. There's a group that doesn't really care about Jay-Z either. From our sure. Extent. But 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 the fact that he's had so much success that's what they look for these days. But, he, but to me, he's, to me, he's above, so wealthy that it's like, OK, well, now what now? What, what do I need to do with my money? But it's not even about wealth, though. For me, to me, it's more about his influence. He has a huge influence over people, a, a I, huge influence. I mean, money. I don't know. Money plays a part in everything. I but I'm just that. saying the kids, sadly, that's what the kids aspire. The money part is what, what gets their attention yeah. from a standpoint of, you know, what I mean, kind of yeah. like that's what gets their attention because. You know, how much do you have? What do you have? It's kind of like, I mean, maybe it's because of the kids, the, the don't haves. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what that's one thing with the kids that we try to uh, that I then I really and, and, and my theory so far I think is is working. I think the same with you. Our kids aren't uh, seduced by all that because no. they have a comfortable living, and it actually they actually you know see. You know, they see these things, Mercedes, or whatever. It's not it's not it, it takes some of the hype out of all of it, you know, because um, I think that's kids who don't have or don't have any exposure. They get so excited about certain things. And then when they grow up, they realize this. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. They realize it's not as hype as I thought it was. You know? Right. 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 So I try right. to put it in front of them at least. And like, OK, that's what that's like. OK. But what would you do if like one of your kids like was all about the fame and wanted you know, like like you have beautiful daughters and one of them, let's say one of them was very confident in her looks mm -hmm. and knew that her looks were going to get her a lot of places. And it's like she was like 14 years old and she just had this attitude of entitlement because she was beautiful. Mm. You know, not saying that they're not, but I'm saying, you know, there's a difference between being beautiful and one just thinking I am the, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think, yeah, I think we we would have to just keep it, have to keep it real at the crib. And they do. <laughs> I mean, my, my oldest, you know, she does. I mean. But I think you have to. Uh, but not to the you know. point where it's obnoxious, though. Where no, to the point no. Well, where she I think feels a sense the, of entitlement. Well, that's the advantage of having, just like you, a beautiful wife. They mm -hmm. can, they can, they can, rem they can kind of keep that in check and and teach the girls what's important and not, you know, that's one thing you see again. Just like, I guess, just like the obsessive wealth, uh, a lot of these uh, athletes and hip hop stars or whatever, rock stars, even. You're right. They have these the girl the women. They kind of treat them like, like you said, an attractive woman can get anything she wants, that whole mentality. But the thing that's interesting to me about that is that it really plays with somebody who has low self-esteem mm -hmm. or somebody who ain't never had nothing. Right. Because anytime I hear women talking about, I got to have all these bags and all that kind of stuff, that would be a sign, you know, to me. Because they're thirsty. Like, they're thirsty. They're thirsty. Yeah. yeah it's that. like, you know, because when you're when you're when you really are a bad chick, you're not thirsty. Right. And you're not going to give up your life for a bag. And first right. of all, who cares if you got some money to go in the bag? You know, it's like. <laughs> and so, you know, yeah, I think it does present an opportunity <laughs> for us oh, to kind of. I, I, I was remember when we worked together that time and, and uh, that we had competition. This, uh, there was this other station in the market and they were out giving away like donuts and then you went out with like fifty dollars or something and we're passing <laughs> out money. And then the girl, they was were, like, yeah. and the girl was like, don't sell out your values for that. <laughs> Man, you went back, didn't you? <laughs> that, yeah. was, that was so funny, though. I was like, oh, my. You had nerve, man. You went out there right where he went. Like, a radio station would do what they call a van hit back in the day, where they get in the station van, and they would go to a location. They would call back to the radio station say, hey, we're going to be here for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, come get a free bumper sticker T-shirt, take us to the concert, whatever it was, right? And they'd have that. That was the location they were at. Well, one morning, they were out there, and Mark was like, I'm going out there, man. And so I said, all right, so go. So he took the van and he went and you were like, not even 50 feet. You were, you were really, I mean, you were like right next to her. 
<laughs> and you set up, and you just, and they, and you just, you, you tore her down, man. Where she was like, "Don't sell out yourself for more. Don't sell your morals for whatever it was you were giving. You were giving away money or something." But oh man, that was that was ah, that's a good old day. <laughs> I didn't mean to stop you, man. That was just something that, when you said something, that just triggered that thought in my mind. That was crazy. That's yeah. And, that's yeah. That was the good old radio days. Man. Well, yeah, and I think you do see a generation of that whole gold digger mentality. Um, that yeah, that, that's what you you fight against with the, with your girls is you really just want them to have a uh, character mm-hmm. and you know, come on, man. I mean, I think I think again, having father. The studies show that you know having the father in their life gives them a different outlook. But I think the fact that yeah, any man just gonna you know just because he has some money he can he can get you that that's not that's not it. Well, what does that make you if you fall for that? Yeah. What, yeah. what, does, what does that say about you? You know. So you yeah. got to think about that. So, well, we are at the thirty minute mark where we are. We'll just leave it right here. Wrap it up in a nice little bundle, you know. So I was thinking I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a mailbox and if people have like uh, advice they would like from two fathers about their daughters. Yes, they can send it to us, and we'll read it on the air. We won't read your name or anything, but we'll read it on. We'll read it here on the show and give our take on it of what we think you should do. We're not professionals. We're not degreed. We're just fathers who are raising six daughters. So, right. if you want to, I'll, I'll get a mailbox and I'll put it down on the lower third and everything, uh, as they say at the bottom of the screen. So, Mark has an iHeartRadio channel that well, you can go and listen to. Uh, he had a. Uh, Content on uh, there was something I heard you do last week. Oh, the thing about name uh, words. Yeah, that my was, mic, that my was, mic sounded terrible, but I, I, <laughs> that was very good though, man. That was that was that was that was very good. So well, you know, and I want to uh, plug my app. You know, with your phone, I have an app that's available. Free app. It's a Mark Clark app. It's M A R C C L A R K E. You can get that on all all of the phone systems. Now my the i the iPhone the spelling is kind of janky. It's M A R C and and actually the C L A R K E, I think they added an extra K E. It's gonna mm-hmm. take them about a couple of days to switch it. But type in Mark Clark and it, it might still come up. There's more people get it, you'll get it. But but as far as the other phone systems, it's just it's Mark Clark. Mm-hmm. Uh, Android and uh Blackberry. Huh? What? Uh, what? Windows <laughs> and all the huh? other what? what Windows? What? So and and it's free. Free. We and like it, free. One stop shop for, for most of the stuff that we're doing, that I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. You can also get the audio uh, portion of what we just did, Two Dads, Six Daughters, also is available uh, on Mark Clark's app on iHeartRadio, too. So yeah. I'll give you all the links in the show notes and stuff like that. So uh, thanks again for watching Two Dads, Six Daughters, man. Next week. Next week, Tony. Yeah. And we're trying, we're trying uh, something uh, this week to try and do a Men on Scandal because Scandal begins this week. So we're going to try and put together like a 15 minute show after it airs and Definitely. get it up of a, man, a man's perspective of scandal. You know, women don't say, well, I thought Kay, I thought Olivia Pope should have done this. Well, now we're going to tell you what men think Olivia Pope should have done. <laughs> so we're going to have some fun with that, too, coming up later in the week. But I'll keep you updated on that. So. All right, man. Next week, dude. Same bad time.